Maybe. <laughs> okay. We're live. Yay. All right. This is Jen Healy, and we're doing a private training with my dear friend, Beverly. And so she's allowed us to live stream it for you. All right. So hopefully the camera is in the right position this time. We won't have to stop halfway through, but this is the exciting part about being live. So yeah, so we're going to live stream on Thursdays at 11 and share the basics with you. Today, we're going to go over four in the yoga translations in the manual, and that is Chillaxin, Chillaxin Flow, and then our Dancing Shiva sequence. So it's 4A, <coughs> Chillaxin, and then 4B, Dancing Shiva. Okay, so we have a big job to do today. And the basic training is yoga translations one through four. So we've done one, two, and three. So four would be the most advanced in the basics. So it's still a basic practice, but then you get we get into more um, dynamic poses. I like to use the word dynamic, so that way it's not scary when we say advanced. They're just a little bit more intricate. So then we just take it as far as it's comfortable for our person, for our peoples. So let's start by getting into the swing. We always start by checking the equipment, making sure it's in a good position, standing in the center of the mat. We push it down with our forearms so we can get it nice and low. The swing is always going to ride up, okay? And so if we start with it low on the ribs and lean back, we're going to create a hook with our forearms and then slide to the front of the mat. Now, once we're here, we start in our sumo, which is a 10 and 2 with our feet, 45 degrees turned out. And this is our seated position. This is how we get into all of our poses. We make sure that our chest is lifted and our hips are heavy. It's always good to start out by warming up the hips, right? If, uh, if you've had a long day already or if you've been sitting a lot, this is just a nice way to release the pelvis and get the tension out. Let me turn the heater off now so we don't need the noise competition. There we go. Oh, I like it. Tropical in here, <laughs> creating my own microclimate. Okay, so from sumo, we're gonna hug the swing. We always hug outside in, so that way we keep our hook. We're gonna grab for the leg loops and we're gonna get these on. Last time we did some core strengthening, so we're gonna activate the core by lifting the knee, pulling down strongly, and then we turn the knee out to get the foot in there. You might need to give it a little hand. So same hand as foot can help the leg loop on. Now for all of these positions, the leg loop is at the knee. Last time we practiced with the leg loop at the ankle. So we're gonna stay centered. So keep your other foot in half sumo grab. Okay. And then when we lift, we're gonna go ahead and get that behind the knee again. Alrighty. So once we're here, just make sure everything is even. We look up and make sure the carabiners are on the same level as one another. And then we also make sure that when our hips are heavy, our knees are below our chest. This is really, really important. We don't want the leg loops super high up. We want to make sure that they're lower than chest level. Okay? That'll give better alignment. And then once we're there, we go ahead and use our chillaxin arms. Ah, so this is the full chillaxin pose. Okay? Hips heavy. Heart open, head relaxed. Okay, great. Now if you need to take a moment to sway, I call it swagger, it's a really nice way to open up the hips. You're gonna gently rock from side to side. Now, your gaze is always up towards the sky. You can glance at me and glance at the screen, but then look up towards the sky so your head can lean back into your hands. Elbows are wide, pulling away from one another. And you're clasping behind the occipital ridge. So your head has something to fall back into, like a little platter, a little pillow. And you keep your hips heavy the whole time here. Your chest actually rotates, so it's pointing up towards the sky. So you're leaning back into the swing. Swing is right behind the heart. Okay. Now you have to find the sweet spot. The swing might be too high or too low. If it's too low, it'll flare out the ribs and you'll go back too far. Then you're not actually opening the heart, you're just opening up the rib cage. And if it's too high, then it's gonna be pinching the underarms and you're not getting the lift of the chest. So if your chest is pointing towards forward, towards the front of the room, press back and lift up. Okay, it's a big arch through the upper thoracic spine. Nice. After we give it a little sway from side to side, let's start with some hip openers. You can reach up and grab for the swing and give it a little hop 
if you need it to go into a different position or change position. So that's a nice, easy way to adjust the swing too. So you can lean back to get it to go lower, or you can hold on and hop and then come back in. Especially if it feels like it's eating your shirt, you can give it a little hop. Then we're gonna use the <coughs> leg loops with our foot on top of the opposite thigh. So what we're gonna do is hug the leg loops towards us once we get into position. I like to keep the foot flexed, and if it's too much to hug, you can just hold on to the leg loops. Okay, so I call this a seated pigeon because we're crossing the right foot over to the left. And then when we hug the leg loops towards us, we lift from the chest, not the head. So don't head dive. So you don't bring your head back. You keep your head directly over your body and pull the shin towards your chest as much as it's comfortable. It's a big stretch. Keep the foot flexed, which means your pinky toe side too. Okay, all the toes. <laughs> and then we're going to undulate the spine for a couple of breaths. Inhale, open. It's like a mini star. And then exhale, hug. Squeeze the leg loops towards you. Inhale for five breaths. We're going to undulate. Exhale, hug. Squeeze in. Hugging towards the chest. Inhale, open. And exhale, hug. I like to videotape from the side here because you get a better position, a better view of the position of the swing. When it's straight on, sometimes you can't tell what's going on. Last time, inhale, and then exhale, hug. Stay here. Maybe you want to stack. This is a Gomukhasana version where the knees stack. So there's lots of different variations you can do here. You can just play with it and find your, your favorite variation. Another nice stretches to extend the leg. We're kind of doing the extended version here. Usually seated pigeon is enough, but I wanted to show you some variations. Okay, so we're gonna release that foot, let it come out, do a little swagger from side to side, reset. Remember the mantra, hips heavy, heart open, head relaxed, gaze is up towards the sky. So just remember this, like repeat it in your mind over and over again. So it becomes second nature. It's very different. Most people are pressing their hips up and have their heart closed. So their front of the spine is contracted or compressed. We're trying to open up both the front and back of the spine evenly. Use your momentum to come into second side, left foot on top of the right thigh. Oh, come to center, flex the toes back, inhale, open the arms, and then exhale. Let's use the leg loops and hug the shin towards the heart for a deeper stretch. Okay, so just hang out here and notice, <sighs> the more you relax, the deeper the stretch, right? So we have to find that balance between engaged but relaxed. And then inhale, blossom, star, open the heart. Exhale, hug and squeeze the leg loops towards the center line. Inhale, open. Use the breath. Initiate the movement with the breath. Exhale, hug. Smooth it out. Inhale. Open it up, star. Exhale, hug and squeeze the leg lips towards you. Good. Inhale, open. Let's come back and touch your legs and arms. I'm going to show you another variation here where we can come into a twist. Okay, so I have my foot still hooked, my knee is bent, I'm pressing my hips down and I'm twisting to look underneath my left armpit. Okay, that's a nice side angle twist. And then we can extend the leg from here just by sliding it up. So if holding onto the foot was too much, we can do an extended leg twist just like this. Same thing, hips heavy, heart open, head relaxed. So lean your head back into your hands like you're looking up towards the sky and then just change your gaze to looking underneath your armpit, but the head position is the same. Okay, lift your chin, lift your chin, and then look down with your chin lifted. Mm -hmm. Nice, totally different. Okay, let's come on back to cross knees. So we even it out on both sides. Let's reach around and grab for the foot. Our right hand grabs your left foot. And then you can grab for both feet for the more advanced version. This is a little intense on the underarms. So the variation I usually like to do for beginners is I have my left hand grab for the leg loop that's around the right knee, and then I kind of pull and twist. It feels so good. 
feel that in the hips. Mm -hmm. So good. Okay, slowly unfurl and release. I'm gonna go ahead and sway it out. Okay, so now we're ready for the chill flow. If you need to make any adjustments, sometimes it'll the pressure under the knees feels like a little much in time. Just go ahead and you know fix your outfit, <laughs> adjust the leg loops, adjust the swing. Just take a moment to reset. We pause in between. So that was just chillaxing to swagger to see the pigeon. Our first three. That's enough. That could be an entire beginner warm up. If you want to go into the chill flow, we're going to go into three parts and then we're going to add on from there. Okay, the first one is just straight up and down. It's a vertical line. So drop your hips and get your head over your spine. So it's not star, it's a vertical line. So we just tee the arms. Okay, take a nice big inhale here. Exhale. Now, star is when your lower body stays exactly the same. You arch from the upper thoracic spine and point the chest towards the sky. Keep the arms in a T for this one, okay? It's totally different than letting your arms collapse back into a V. Yes, that's better. So let your hands go back, though. It's, you're still in a T, but then, yes, that's it, that's it. And then what we're going to do from here is we're just going to hug the leg loops again and dive in for child's pose. So those are going to be our first three poses. So inhale, blossom for T. Nope. Inhale, blossom for T. I know, I'm mess messing it up because I <laughs> teach this differently sometimes. <laughs> it's on autopilot. And then exhale, star. And then inhale, come back through center. And then exhale, child. Okay, so we're taking a little pause in the middle. Inhale, blossom for T again. Exhale, star. Inhale, come back through center, nice and slow, and then exhale when you get the child's pose. Okay, now we can speed it up. We're going to go a little faster. Now we're just going to inhale, blossom for star, add the legs, extend the legs, exhale, child. So let's undulate the spine like that. I just want to make sure we keep our arms in a T, okay? Inhale, blossom for star. Exhale, child. Let's round it. Good. Inhale, blossom, star. That's it. Big star, superstar. Exhale, child. Okay. So this is a good rest pose. If you this this time we bow in. We let our forehead touch our hands. Now we're going to add on. So from here, when we inhale, blossom for star, we're not going to go back to child. So we're going to bring our hands to prayer. It's always around the swing, and then our legs squeeze together. When our legs squeeze together, we press our hips up and lean back. So our weight is supported by our forearms. Okay, let's go ahead and exhale, bring the hands back down through center. Let's try that again. Let's inhale for a T. Exhale, star, extend. Inhale, namaste, hands to prayer. Press the hips up and lean back. So the idea is we're undulating the spine back and forth. So you can inhale, Press the hips up. Exhale, drop the hips down. Stay in namaste. Just feel the undulation of the spine. Inhale, press. Exhale, drop. Inhale, press the hips up real strong. Toes touch the whole time. Okay. Exhale, drop the hips. Inhale, open it up for T. Okay. That might be enough. Just those three poses, right? And then the fourth was namaste. Now, if you're group is adventurous, or if your buddy is adventurous, we're going to go into ladle. Just watch for the first one. So don't follow me yet. I'm just going to show you what it looks like. Okay. I hold on to the swing and I have to wiggle to get it across the hip bones properly. My toes are touching, legs are straight the whole time. And maybe I just hold on an arch. Maybe that's enough. If the person feels balanced and comfortable, the arms can go wide out to the side to a T, and then overhead, palms stay up, okay? So we don't go into a handstand. We don't actually even have to touch the ground. Palms stay up. Then, if the person is still feeling adventurous, the biggest pose is called bow. And in bow pose, we hold on to the ankles and lift the heart to open. It's a big pose. 
So release the feet, reach up, grab for the swing, nice big inhale, and then exhale, come to sit. Now, if that's too much, you just stay in on the stay and then repeat the chill flow just the first half. But let's try it. So we're going to take it from the beginning and then we're going to add on. Okay, so inhale T. Exhale star. Inhale, come to center. Exhale, child. Nope, follow along. Oops. I know you want to go on all autopilot, but you're not ready yet. <laughs> okay, let's start it from the beginning. Inhale T. Let's exhale, child. So let's do that a couple times. Okay, let's remember this is the beginning. Inhale T. Exhale, child. Okay. Now we're going to inhale T. Exhale, star. Inhale, come through center. Exhale, child. Okay. Now from here, let's continue on. Inhale, star. Exhale, namaste. Yeah. Namaste is with the hands of the heart. Inhale, press the hips up. Exhale, lean back. Maybe this is enough, but if you want to go on, inhale, reach up, grab for the swing. Slide it down to the waist. Just if you bring weight into your head and stay arched. So head points down towards the ground. The swing will slide to the waist. Usually you have to shimmy to get it right across the hip bones into a comfortable spot. Toes stay touched the whole time. Arch here. And then if you're ready, inhale, open the arms wide to a T. And then exhale overhead. Fingers touch. Okay. And then if you're ready, bend the knees. Inhale, swim the, swim the arms all the way back and around. Hold on to the ankles. Keep the hips pressing up the whole time. Arch and open the heart. Pull the feet away from the back of the head. Big breaths. Beautiful. Inhale, release the ankles. Reach up, grab for the swing. Bicep curl. Exhale, come to sit. And let's try that one more time. Okay? We'll take it from the beginning. <sighs> so you'll probably get a big head rush. So let's just talk about it for a second. Come into <laughs> chillaxin before we do another one. So what we're doing is we're opening up the front of the spine, and then we're, we're spinning the chakras by coming up and down, up and down, up and down. It's a lot more information that we teach in the AirX program, but it's just good to know that we're turning on the endocrine system. Chakras overlay the endocrine system. So your buddy might get a full body sweat, um, dizzy, a big rush of energy, all kinds of reactions as the endocrine system comes back online. So the idea, these poses and the sequences have been deliberately created in order to heal the body and open the body very specifically. So for this pose, when we open up the front of the spine and come into a big arch, it's a very activating, heating pose. So we come into a bow. And then when we come back up and we come to a close and we repeat that over and over again, opening and folding, then it starts to pump the energy systems of the body. The endocrine system is the main energy manager. Okay. So yeah, usually you can see it in people's faces. I always joke around and say, well, that was your first high, <laughs> your first free high. But um, whenever you go upside down or come into any sort of inversion, then you're going to get that big rush. You, get, you do get used to it in time. Um, you're getting lots of blood and oxygen flowing to your head, which is the opposite direction that it normally goes. We usually get more blood and oxygen to our feet. So your feet might feel a little cold or falling asleep because they're not used to being suspended like this. You can just give them a little break every once in a while. You can extend the leg loops. You can um, mix it up. Okay, let's come back into our sequence. Let's just start from our inhale T and go into child. Inhale T, exhale child. Now just stay here if you feel complete. You don't have to go on, you can just rest. This is a nice option for some beginner, beginner students. Inhale, blossom for star, long arms, long legs. Exhale, namaste, hands to prayer. Press the hips up. Inhale, reach up, grab for the swing. Exhale. Let the head tilt down. Exhale, pour the weight down towards the earth. Shimmy the swing across the hips. Inhale, bend the knees, and exhale, swim the arms back. Good. Nice big inhalation and exhalation. Open up the hips. Press them towards the sky. Knees are always going to stay stacked over the hips, right? So knees will tend to flare out. 
pull them towards center. Okay. Inhale, release the ankles. Exhale, reach up and grab for the swing. Inhale, bicep curl up. Exhale, come to sit. Good, I recommend staying for five breaths. Woo, in our go pose. The longer you can stay in that one, the, the greater the effects, but there should be absolutely no pain for the lower back. The swing is acting like a spacer for the lower back and we're arching and opening from the heart, the back of the heart, the upper thoracic spine, and therefore we're getting this big, beautiful curve through the back of the spine instead of collapsing in our lower back and kinking the lumbar spine. And then when we come into our counter pose here, just real simple and gentle, we're dropping the hips, right? letting the pelvis be heavy, we're lifting the heart, and keeping that arch, and then the head is sinking back. So your swing's not quite high enough yet. Um, Beverly, let your chest sink down a little bit more so it's right behind the heart. If the swing is too low, you're just flaring out your rib cage and pinching the adrenals. It's um, uncomfortable for the kidneys. So make sure it's right behind the heart. It's where the bottom tips of the shoulder blades meet the back. That's where the heart is. <laughs> okay. We're hooking the wings with the swing, which is really nice for rearranging the posture. Okay, so we have one more little sequence to do here, not little, but we're <laughs> opening it up into skydiver and butterfly. These are really, really great poses for opening up everything, chest, hips, belly, heart, the whole front of the spine. So whenever you need a break, let's show the easy ones first, okay? So we're gonna reach for the knees. We're gonna slide up as high as we can on the leg loops. Now, what, what we wanna do is when we're bicep curl, pull ourselves up, bring your feet to the center of the mat and the leg loops will slide all the way up to the groin, depending on your pants, <laughs> if you have slippery pants on. If you have sweatpants on, or they might just bunch up and get stuck. So what you want to do is wiggle them into the sweet spot right across the top of the thigh, okay? So let's show the easy one first because it's also good to get the feet on the ground. Maybe you need more circulation into the toes for a minute if they were feeling tingly or purple. Okay, so we're going to lean back and notice there is a space between the leg loops and the swing. It's very important to identify that you're holding on to the swing to begin. Okay, holding on to the swing, we bring our hands to prayer like namaste. Press your arms through center and away. Just to a T, not a V. Okay, so look, make sure your thumbs are pointing up. I call it the cold Jesus move. And then that they're directly in alignment with the shoulders. That's a T. Not back, not forward, not down. <laughs> All kinds of creative variations with the humans, <laughs> with the peoples. And then from here, we're leaning forward with the heart. So we're not head diving. This is not the pose to. I, I don't normally show all the knots or what not to do, but it's really important to get the alignment here. That way we can get proper openness. So we're gonna let the feet be wide. We're gonna be up on the toes and then we press the hips forward. Now I'm just banking a little bit from side to side because I'm adjusting the leg loops into a sweet spot on the outer portion of the hip bone. If it's on the inner portion of the hip bone, it won't feel good. So we let them be on the outside. Usually if I just sway from side to side, they'll go into the right spot. But you can use your hands to adjust if you need. Okay, this is called skydiver. If you pick up your toes and pull them apart, ta-da, keep your T, look out, and make sure you can see your thumbs directly in alignment with the shoulders, a T, okay? Not a V behind you. That way you're really engaged. Now we can bend our elbows, keep your hands high. They're not at your waist. They're up here by your shoulders, and then go ahead and one at a time, wiggle into the elbow creases, but keep your hands up high. Make a strong fist. Look at your wrists, Beverly, and make sure your wrists are straight, okay, forever. It's really an important cue for you. Keep your joints really straight. Okay, now we can pick up our feet. We're going into butterfly, transitioning from skydiver into butterfly. Feet together, knees wide. Lift your knees as high as you can. Okay, so even though the leg loops are not at the knees, we're still lifting them as high as we can. And this is our butterfly. It's a big openness through the chest. Now I actually say it's okay to lift to drop the head because the weight of your head is now going to open your shoulders. I do like to keep the alignment and gaze forward just slightly, but that's just me. But if you want to drop your head to get a deeper stretch, you'll really feel the pull on your shoulders. 
Okay, just notice the difference between those two variations. Awesome, when you're ready to come out, legs are wide and down. Let them land at nine and three on your mat. Engage your arms and lift your upper body, sink back. Okay, yeah. Now we're gonna use our hands to press the leg loops back down. So if we just drop our hips, they're gonna slide. Let them slide all the way to the back of the knees again, one at a time, you get a nice myofascial massage as they go down, which is really great for opening up all of the connective tissue. Mm -hmm. All the way down to the knees, Beverly, we're not doing that part today. <laughs> so in the Eric's program, we do a much more thorough job of massaging on our legs, and it's something to look forward to once we get our basics done. Okay, we're gonna try that same sequence. So with the leg loops up at the groin, at the hips, I call that the high skydiver move, because we're like bringing the leg loops all the way up high. Now, this is a more challenging version, so if the leg loops happen to just naturally slide up to your groin, don't worry about it, you're not doing anything wrong, I would just say keep them even, keep them symmetrical. So if one slides up, slide the other one up, because they're not going back down. So. Just let them be symmetrical on the legs. We're gonna inhale, reach forward for our knees. Exhale, slide up as high as we can on the leg loops. Inhale, bicep curl, just come up with the chest. Exhale, squeeze the knees together, sink the hips down. Let's do a few undulations here. Inhale, lift, bicep curl. Exhale, lower and squeeze. It's almost like we're coming to a mini child's pose. Inhale, lift with the heart. This is really important. It's not this with your hips sinking back. You're pressing your hips forward. Forward, yeah, that's it. Exhale, squeeze. Inhale, lift, and lift the hips too. So keep your spine in a straight line. Then we're gonna try and balance. We get our hands in front of the leg loops out to a T again, right? So we look, make sure, yep, that looks good. If they're too far back, then it makes your head dive. If you keep your hands really strong and engaged, then you heart dive. And that's how we come into our skydiver. This is a challenging pose. So what we wanna do is make sure we keep pressing our hips forward and down, forward and down, keep pressing, lift your feet, lift your feet up. Yeah, there you go. And then from here, so are you in a V or a T? There you go, both arms. Look at both arms, because you pulled one forward and not the other. <laughs> I was begging, okay. So we bend the elbows, remember we flex, so we bring the hands up high. Yep, now the wrists are straight, good job. Slide in, then the knees bend and the feet come together and now we're in our butterfly. Beautiful, really nice butterfly. Okay, keep pressing the hips down towards the ground. Most people sink their hips back, you have to keep pressing them towards the mat. Press your bum down if that's helpful. <laughs> they are connected. Okay, notice that this is a really big opener through the chest. Okay, the hips are opening, the heart is opening, belly is opening, everything is opening. Your lower back should be happy. When you're ready to come out, pull your feet down towards the ground, sink your hips back, and engage with your arms. You're gonna catch yourself back in your chillaxin pose. We are natural monkeys, so just hold on to the swing if that feels scary and you're not sure, but your elbows hooked is our anchor point that keeps us safe, so you should be good. But just hold on to the swing if you ever feel nervous. Oh, really good. We're going to do that one more time just because it feels amazing. <laughs> and then we're going to get into 4B, which is the dancing Shiva sequence. Okay, so we warmed up the spine with a chillaxing flow in order to be ready for skydiver into butterfly. They are our biggest openers, heart openers, and amazing if you can get there. <laughs> Again, if it's too hard, come into high skydiver version and it'll be less, less on the hips and less on the shoulders. All right, so come on back through center, inhale, open the arms wide towards the knees and then exhale, slide up as high as you can. Inhale, bicep curl, lift, legs go wide, prepping, exhale, squeeze, inhale, open, exhale, squeeze, this is our flow in all the poses. One pose opens, and the exhale, I usually call it a relax or a squeeze. Sometimes we can call it a contraction. 
but we more like to relax than contract. Okay, now we're gonna balance. Make sure you're pressing your hips forward. Very important to find your balance. So you're leading with the heart. Head stays in line with the body. We keep that nice plumb line where the crown of the head is pointing towards the, the top of the room. Okay, arms are out in a T, keep them in a T. See if you can press the hips forward, press the hips forward. We're rotating the pelvis down towards the ground. Beautiful. Keep your T, your arms going back. So just notice what happens if your arms go back. You like kind of lose the posture, you lose the pose. Then we can slide in, right? So bend the elbows, bend the knees. Keep a nice strong fist, flex towards your ears, right? Pull your elbows down and pull your fists up. Down is towards the ground. Yes, and that'll help keep the alignment. A lot of people kind of lose it in the shoulders and then you don't have the strength. Okay, now, now we relax. So once we get the alignment, now we want the openness. Alignment comes first so that way we're opening up properly. <sighs> Just notice what's happening in the hips, noticing what's happening in the shoulders and in the belly and the chest. Just let it all feel good. I call it fluttering. You can kind of wiggle the hips around a little bit. I like to bring one foot up and then the other foot up. So it's more graceful and smooth than those jagged movements. So just do little tiny micro movements. We don't ever want to kind of strain like we're wrestling, <laughs> trying to get out of a rope bond or something. Okay, so pull the feet down towards the ground, sink the hips back, engage with the arms and catch yourself. Beautiful, such a big pose. You should probably feel wrung out, you know, opened and twisted and squeezed in all kinds of good ways from doing that. So take some time to reset before we move on. And we're gonna come back through our swagger. So if you're having trouble finding your momentum in swagger, we'll just do a little FYI here. You press one knee down and then the other knee down. So the other knee doesn't necessarily lift, it's just relaxed and that'll help create some angular momentum. This movement from side to side, as simple as it seems, is so good for opening up the hips and the legs. You can even do a little extension through one leg and then the other and really play with it. You can get some big swag and some big swing, really dynamic, or you can be super chill about it, which I call our slow jazz, our slow smooth jazz, okay? So just find your favorite version of some of these poses. There's a lot of play in the poses and that is exploring and experiencing the body in any way. That's why I like to call it aerial yoga play. <sighs> and then when we come back through center, we're gonna go through the dancing Shiva sequence. Now in this sequence, it's really important that we keep that openness and that alignment that we just gained. We're gonna come into some lunges. So let's start where we left off with our hands on our knees. Inhale, slide up. Exhale, bicep curl and lift. Now we're gonna inhale and extend the left leg. Just right there, extend the left leg. And what we need to do is bicep curl up and then rotate the hip towards the ground. I'm going really slow to get that movement. I'm gonna do it one more time because most people just hang out here and that's not quite the lunge that we're going for. We have to inhale, lift, and then twirl the hip to point down, yeah. Once we talk, keep your head in line with your body, Beverly, look at me. Head in line with the body all the way. Your hands a little bit high, so let it shoot directly out of the shoulder. Yeah, kind of like routine the arms. Isn't that a little bit of a stronger stretch too? There we go, awesome. So yeah, you can hold on to both leg loops. Make sure you keep holding on, this is really important. Or this back arm straightens and then you look towards the side and you square the hips towards the ground. And this is our full lunge. It's a really amazing, strong pose. <laughs> Let's come on back through center. Oh yeah, I call it a roundabout. Let's do second side. So we inhale bicep curl. We're gonna extend just the right leg this time, bend the left knee, and then you have to rotate the hip towards the ground. So it goes from pointing up towards the sky to forward and then down. So it's a big wheel, it's a big spiral. Then straight out of the shoulder, we're gonna press the arm back against the leg loop to get a deeper stretch, drop the hips. Really good. So the chest lifts, the head stays pointed up towards the sky. Okay, crown of the head is in alignment with the sky. There we go, it's a big arch. Mm -hmm. 
That's great. Now make sure you're lifting through the back of the neck too. Yes, that's it. That's it. You can actually pull with your left hand and do a little bicep curl to get that lift in the upper body, yet the lower body is dropping. Okay, let's round about. <laughs> let's hang out here. Whenever I giggle, that means my hips are like, oh my God, <laughs> like what's happening? <laughs> Feel a little tight today. All right, so swagger in between if you need a pause. Okay, just loosen everything up. It's resetting the spine, recalibrating. Now we're gonna come back and try hummingbird, which is both legs straight one more time with the arm press. But you can do one side at a time with the lunges to warm up. But let's just try it. We're gonna inhale, reach up as high as we can. This is a strong pose, so just try it. Bicep curl up to wide legs. Now the arms are gonna stay straight out of the shoulders. Thumbs are up and we're gonna press away. When we press away, we drop the hips, right? And arms stay straight. Now it's called hummingbird because most people, yeah, you can do one side of the leg loop, straighten the arms all the way. Press, 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 straight up and down. Mm -hmm. Now most people flutter, <laughs> that's why we call it a hummingbird, right? And if it's too hard, to press the arm straight, you can just practice press, little presses, press. These are really great for strengthening the shoulders, both at the same time, you can't do one at a time. You have to press both at the same time. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's a big strength strengthener for the shoulders. Go ahead and shake it out, shake, shake, shake. And then we come back to center. Let's make sure we give it a little hop and adjust the swing whenever we need. Okay, let's finish up Dancing Shiva. We have about 10 more minutes and then we get into final relaxation, stick with it. Reaching for the knees, inhale, reach up as high as you can, exhale, bicep curl, come on up. Let's bend the right knee, keep the left leg straight, rotate, rotate the hip down towards the ground. So keep holding on to the leg loops, lift the head, lift the heart, that's really important. It's a big arch here. Now if it's tight, you're probably gonna head dive. So you wanna slow your roll, just bring your foot down, back foot. Bring your foot down if you get too much swag, okay? You wanna really keep that center line, okay? It's like about keeping that control, right? Mm -hmm. Nice, okay, great. Now from here, the more advanced version, we're building up to coming into the full Shiva, but the First pose we do is we bend the knee and grab for the inside edge of the foot. Inside is the other side and the thumb is up, right? So we don't really want to close the shoulder. So if my thumb is pointing down, it closes the shoulder. If I roll my thumb towards the sky, it opens the shoulder. I want you to just try that a couple times at home and just notice the difference. If I close the shoulder, the shoulder rolls down. When I open the shoulder with the thumb up, the shoulder rolls up and that's better alignment for the joint. Then I bend the knee and I catch the inner arch. Beautiful. For now, we're just gonna keep the arm extended. Lift through the chest. <laughs> you wanna sink the hips down, but not the head, right? Crown of the head towards the sky. It should be a big opener. Release the foot. Let's go ahead and round the belt. Shake it out. Maybe take a few breaths or swagger. Mm -hmm. Drop the hips, keep the heart open. Head relax back into the hands. It becomes second nature in time, but just remind your body until it does. The hips tend to want to float away. <laughs> All right, come to neutral. Inhale, reach forward, grab for the leg loops as high as possible. Make sure it's the leg loops and not the swing. Bend the left knee, extend the right, and then rotate. When we rotate, we can press the back arm straight. That's going to be a big opening, okay? Now the thumb stays up. Right, just everybody do the thumb up first on the inside, okay? And then what we're gonna do is bend the knee. Now, if you bend the knee without the hip rolling down towards the ground, the foot's gonna go back behind you. If your hip is pointing down towards the ground, when you bend your knee, it'll catch in your hand, that's how you know. So don't ever look down, there's nothing down there. <laughs> it's like my newest expression, because everyone's looking down. I want you to look up if you wanna look anywhere. Just look up, be like, oh, that's so exciting. Imagine pretty blue, fluffy skies and clouds, no. So yeah, so keep your gaze and your energy lifted up. Wherever your gaze goes, your energy flows. If you look down, the whole posture collapses. I'm trying to get that big lift through the chest. Okay, release when you're ready. Come on back around. That was, we'll just call it the half Shiva. <laughs> we just did one grab with the foot, but we're gonna come into the full expression 
If it's too much, just reverse it and go back to the last pose. You don't get any special points or rewards or medals or stars for doing the full Shiva. It's more just for fun. But if you lose the alignment, if you lose the posture, then it doesn't have um, as much benefit than going back and just trying the foot grab with the bent knee. So let's just try it. Okay, we're gonna come through center. Reach for the knees, slide up as high as you can, bicep curl, bend the right knee. Keep the left leg straight. So we have to get the alignment first. It's the only way you're gonna be able to hook the leg. Thumb is up, bend the knee, grab. And once you grab, you can get the foot into the elbow crease if you stay lifted. If you don't stay lifted, it's gonna be really far away. And then once the foot is hooked, you can balance and come into the full Shiva. Just like to use the hand mudras so that we're actually leaning forward in order to get the full pose. Okay, let's release and go into second side. Let's just go right into it. Bend, left knee, get into position, right? Grab for the foot, should be right there. Bend the elbow crease and hook. And if you're hooked, then you can release your hands, come into the mudra. So if you are leaning forward with your chest, and pressing your hips forward, you're perfectly balanced. That's why we can release with our hands, okay? Otherwise you're spring loaded and we'll go, go on back. Okay, release nice and slow. Oh, let's take a pause. We're gonna come into flying arrow and then Hanuman and then we're done. With that sequence, mm -hmm. we're gonna show you a nice restorative version at the end before we come into Shavasana. Just if all of that was just like no way, my hips are not ready. <laughs> Probably with some other curse words thrown in there, it will just say no way. <laughs> oh, the hips have a lot of holding, a lot of tension. So this might just be like out of the question right now. So we will show you some alternatives. <laughs> but let's finish up. These are, of course, more challenging poses. That's why we save them for the end. But they are really fun. So we're gonna come through our lounge. Okay, bending the right knee, extending the left. And then I'm going to press the front arm straight, like I'm gonna shoot an arrow out. So I call it flying arrow. So press both leg loops forward if you can, Beverly. Try both. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Nice strong arm straight out of the shoulder, lift the chest, that's it. Okay, round about. Let's go right into second side for flying arrow. Bending the left knee, rolling on top of the right. So the back arm bends the front arm straightens. So it's just the opposite of what we did in the lunch. The back arm bends and the front arm straightens. Yeah, press, press, press. Mm -hmm. Really good. Now this is a good time to actually show the restorative version because what we can do in our lunges, and let's just try it, is we can let the leg loops slide up into the high diver position, high skydiver, just on one side. And this can be our lunge. Okay, so it looks like the flying arrow where we, we're helping the hips open by pressing. Press, yeah, you can extend the back arm too, that's fun, or just bend the elbow and hold, hold on. Okay, so you can always ground a foot and then fly, flying arrow doesn't seem so bad. <laughs> okay, I don't necessarily press the back arm straight here, it feels awkward, and then I lose the alignment of the spine, but I can press the front arm straight. Okay, so let's try the other side. Let's actually come into high skydiver and just transition from the center, right? So if somebody's really having a hard time, just bring them up into high skydiver. And then we're gonna walk the left foot out and then the right knee bends and I just help slide it down, I push it down. I'm holding on with both hands, right? So my left hand is grabbing for the leg loop. My right arm is pressing straight out and it's actually helping to deepen the lunge, right? Because I'm pressing that knee forward and I'm having my hips press forward too. So my hips don't sink back. I keep this nice long line of energy, which means I'm stacking the bones. My hips bone and my knee bones stay in the side plane in alignment. Good. So that looks like our flying arrow, but not so flying, <laughs> our grounded flying arrow. All right, let's go ahead and sink back, come into our chillaxing pose. This is our go-to pose here. So Hanuman, <laughs> splits, for those that do yoga, Hanuman is the splits, side splits. 
Not everybody loves the splits, right? That's what the hummingbird is. It's the straddle splits, basically, which people are just like, mm mm. So, you know, have some fun with it. Maybe do one arm at a time, work up to it. If you want to come into Hanuman, it's the same thing, but to the side. Okay, you can just watch. I have to ground my, just watch for this one, to ground my hip bone down and then try and straighten both arms. Now, that might be too much. So, you can try. Flying arrow, you can try the lunge, you can go back and forth. We're doing it with straight legs. Roundabout, go ahead and join me for this one. So from the lunge, okay, I'm gonna straighten the front leg. So both legs are straight. Now I square my hips towards the ground. I keep my head over my spine. Now this is the key, do not head dive because it actually makes it a lot harder. And then from there, see if you can straighten the arms. If you cannot straighten the arms, try one at a time. <laughs> That's right. Maybe the front one, maybe the back one, and then eventually you're helping your body come into the splits. They're supposed to be hard. In fact, <laughs> I, I used to teach this with a leg grab, which I'll show you one more time on the other side. So let's try the other side. Okay, so I come with the right knee bent, left leg straight to begin. I'm going to come in through the full Shiva. Just do whichever version is comfortable for you. And then I extend the front leg and grab for the toes. So this is the Hanuman I used to teach and then no one did it. So I was like, oh, maybe I should try a different version. So the version is straight legs is a little bit easier. And then go ahead and straighten the arms if that's available. It's supposed to be challenging, but we're working. It's easier than doing the splits on the ground. I'll tell you right now, it's a little bit more fun even though it's challenging. Okay, you can bring one leg down. Let's try it from here. Straighten the front leg and grab for the toe. So don't lose the posture, right? So first thing you do is lift the leg. Maybe you grab for the ankle, okay? We don't wanna lose the posture, which means if you have to head dive, <laughs> then we got too far. Let's try going back into our high skydiver. Take a little reset. This would be the more restorative version of our lunges. We're going to go ahead and let just one side. We walk our right foot out to the edge. That is nine o'clock for me, so three o'clock for you. And then we can come into a straight leg. Maybe that's a straight, both legs straight. This is your foundation, right? So that leg has to stay straight. And then maybe there's a grab. You can grab something, grab the back of the knee. Yeah, <laughs> lift it up. Lift that puppy up. So yeah, so this is a grounded version of Hanuman where you don't have to go super far. And then if you wanna try for the calf, wiggle your way down <laughs> and then maybe the toes come out, maybe they don't. <sighs> All right, that's enough for today. It feels like plenty. It was a lot. Number four is the most advanced of the basics, the most dynamic of the movements. Very fun, we went over chillaxin, seated pigeon, our chill flow, and then we went into bow. And we counterbalance with the skydiver and coming into butterfly. Well, Dancing Shiva is really all about the lunges. So we did some splits and some lunges and some arrows. So it's really about opening up the hips, okay? Now, if we wanna come in, let's go into our Shavasana from our sumo. So from here, we're just gonna open our arms wide, always keep the hook, get the leg loops off, very important to stay seated until both leg loops are off. You don't want to stand up and start jumping around. Just for safety, we get both legs loops off before we come on up. So you hold on to the swing, back it up. When we come to center, we're going to spread the swing out and let ourselves get in. So we want to stretch it out to the back of the knees. You have to get a nice big handful. If you don't have it to the back of the knees, so get right underneath your plumb line. Okay, bring your feet down. So there's no swag, right? Good. Here you go. Now we don't sound like we're on a creaky old ship. <laughs> it's just the daisy chains rubbing against the eye hooks. We're actually not on a ship. Okay. So once we get right underneath our plumb line, we're going to lean back and make sure there's enough swing behind the back of the head too. So if it's around the neck, it's not high enough and you have to pull it up. Okay. Just make sure it covers the, the top all the way to the top of the head. 
Now we'll go over a few gentle leg stretches here. We're gonna lift our legs up. You can give them a hand <laughs> if you need a little helping hand. And then let the toes point towards the sky. I call it V burrito. Your legs are in a V shape and your hips are dropped. They're straight and then your arms can be overhead. Just relax here. This is a great way to drain the energy out of the lower body, any stagnation. This is a great way to hang out in Shavasana unless you feel like you need a little extra support. If your legs don't enjoy being extended towards the sky, you can reach around and grab for one of the leg loops. You can put those on like leg warmers, okay? So that can cover the full length of the foot and calf. Okay, usually I just reach around and grab, they'll cooperate and then extend the legs. So you can have the legs up towards the sky or you can have them extended, whatever feels good for today. Okay, find your favorite arm position. You're gonna allow yourself to just drop in. Let's have five luxurious minutes of final relaxation. <sighs> Do a little body scan, let the hips drop, keep the heart open, relax. Let the head sink back. Let your brain just relax back into the back of the skull. Relax your thoughts. Relax your eyes. Wherever you are, just allow the swing to hug you and hold you. It's this beautiful embrace from the Divine Mother. So the swing is our nurturer. It is caring for us. So allow that nourishment to come back into the body, that nurturance. So we get the sensation of being cradled and rocked like we do as infants. And then as adults, we don't get that wonderful squeeze on the surface of the skin. And it's a nice way to relax the nervous system. It naturally will boost the immune system and rebalance the hormones just to hang and relax and cocoon. Typically, I, I suggest just releasing the breath. Let the breath breathe you. Maybe become the observer of the breath. See what that feels like to notice that it happens automatically. Thank goodness. <sighs> the life force energy just pulses in and out, all around, up and down, passing through you and exchanging with your cells. Let the full benefits of the pose be received by the relaxation. The deep rest helps us to fully integrate and receive the goodness of the practice. So important to take that sacred pause. And then just enjoy relaxing back. Send a wave of love and gratitude over your body for being willing to play and experience something new and showing up and being courageous. We're awakening our courageous inner child that wants to come out and play with this practice. It's so important to give yourself that time to play and be creative and explore and enjoy the body. It's not just exercise. Although you will get fit, you will have fun, you will get strong, you will get flexible, but most importantly, you're letting your, your, the intelligence of the body to come out and play. This is how we heal. This is how we come into alignment and become energized again. We make life fun again. We make exercise fun again. And it is profound fun. It's sacred fun. It is deep. You know, it's incredibly beneficial for the body. And as we start to bring more life back into the ends and the edges, we're gonna wiggle our fingers and toes and move nice and slow, awakening the body temple with ease. Maybe lift the hips and gently rock them from side to side for a gentle fishtail movement. Stretch your fingertips away from your toes and stretch the whole spine. Stretch, stretch, stretch everything. Stretch your imagination. Stretch the possibilities. 
<sighs> and then wherever you are, you're just gonna pull your knees into your chest. Let your toes extend towards the sky and wrap your arms around the back of the legs, giving yourself a big hug with straight legs like a mini plow. You can take the leg loops off if you're ready as well, if you had those on. And then bend the knees and give yourself an even bigger hug, wrapping your arms around your shins. Harness all of this energy in the center of your core. And then when you're ready, we're going to sprout one more time. Legs extend to the front of the room, arms to the back of the room. Gently rock your hips from side to side. <sighs> Another deep breath. Now when you bend your knees, you might touch down, prepare your landing gear, reach up for the back edge of the swing. Inhale, lift yourself up. Exhale, come to sit. Yay, let's just end here in our cocoon, sitting Regrounding, sending more love and gratitude for one another, for this opportunity, for the practice, for the teachings, for the time. I really honor your time and appreciate you choosing this practice for yourself. Inhale, open your eyes and reach your arms towards the sky. Hug the swing one more time. Hold on to the front edge and then pull yourself up to stand. Landing in the center of the mat, feel yourself regrounded and hands to prayer, namaste. Hmm. So hold on to this feeling of openness, of alignment, of relaxation, take it with you into your day. Keep the buoyancy, keep the upliftment, okay? Even when you release the swing, keep the spaciousness in your body, that's the magic. And you're actually more connected now. You'll probably feel like gravity is pulling on you even more once we got a little break from it, but we can keep that levity in our lives. All right, this is Jen Keeley. Thank you so much for joining our live stream practice. This was the basic training, uh, private training with my buddy Beverly here in California. And you can find out more about my trainings and my practice at arielyogaplay.com or arx.online. That's A-Y-R-X dot online. Thanks so much. See you next week. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, good.